In today's video, I'll briefly be going over the Turtle IC, what its prime or one of its functions, what are the issues you may have with it. This lives on the home button on the iPhone 7 and 8 and also the Plus variety, which this particular chip normally controls the actual button acting as a button. So let's say you've just swapped over your iPhone or swapped over your screen on your iPhone, you've moved over the home button and you found that the touch ID is still functioning but if you try and wake the phone by pressing the home button nothing happens yet if you hit the power button you can still get it to scan your finger that is highly likely that you have probably done either damage to the turtle IC or the flex connector on the actual phone itself so what I'm going to show in this video or this footage just here is my usual method on removing the home button from an iPhone 7 or 8. So typically I hold the, la the connector on the screen down and then use a fingernail to lift up the connector on the home button. So as you can see it's lifted up there. Typically my next step from here will be using isopropyl alcohol and just dropping that onto or a small amount onto the button itself. So as you see I've just dabbed a bit on there that's usually just enough that it softens the adhesive to then be able to pry it up with a pair of tweezers. So as you can see here I'm working from the right to the left and kind of using it similar to a saw. There we go, that's lifted it up. Now it was a fair bit easier on this one as this was getting removed off an aftermarket screen. On the original you'd probably need to use a little bit more care working it from left, uh, right to left. Now I'm just going to point out the various point of failures that may happen when you do remove the actual home button itself. So in the process of removing the button, you may damage one of three areas. One, where the flex connector actually does the 180 degree bend. Unclipping that may tear a fin cable there. You may damage the I turtle IC lifting it up or you may damage it where it actually connects to the button. So those would usually be the three points of failure. Now I'm just going through the usual method on how I install the button. Usually I try and keep it relatively straight, that flex connector, that thus redu reduce potential damage to it nearest to the button itself. There we go, so this has remained relatively flat. Now I'm just trying to line up the connector itself just to press it. And there we go, that's engaged. The other potential cause of damage is over tightening the screws on the shield. Pretty much, there's only one screw you really have to be cautious of with over tightening, which would be the one connecting to the button itself. So usually you just need to take it slow spin it there yeah, and feel the tension and the torque on it happen. If you're cranking that the home button screw in as fast as you possibly can, you're highly likely going to rip that flex connector as it joins to the button. And that will also more than likely damage the touch ID side of things, which then pretty much your only real option would be replacing it with an aftermarket JC button. So as you can see here, you can see the button lifting up as I'm tightening it a little bit past that and I'm happy with it. As I'm poking here the button itself is not moving it's just got enough tension on there to stay right where it needs to live. Now one other thing I will quickly show is another potential point of touch ID failure. And this one here did present itself as a very similar issue to a failed or damaged turtle IC. This particular screen was producing the same symptoms as that chip being damaged. Turns out the closer that I looked, the actual home button flex did have a slight tear in it. And I could see a trace running there. So in this instance, during my installation, I did accidentally damage that cable 
which in turn then the home button ceased to function. So that is another point to, or another potential source of damage that you could have a look at if you're experiencing home button troubles or potentially touch ID issues. But that basically does it for today's video and I hope you learned something from this and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.